Beta 9 has finally arrived. The two weeks are over, ladies and gentlemen, and Elon Musk actually stuck to a projected timeline. This is rare. This is breaking news. But essentially, he said that at midnight on Friday night, the Beta 9 update would go out to everybody who was already on the private limited beta. So I'm sad to say, even if I owned a Tesla, there's no guarantee I'd be able to talk about it today. And there's great channels between Hyperchange and Dirty Tesla that I'd recommend watching that have been able to cover cover FSD beta literally hours after the update went live, so shout out to those guys for staying up super late and filming really early in the morning to get our first impressions of the beta 9 out to the world. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about what it means for the official rollout after watching quite a few different videos people have posted. The biggest changes in my opinion are moving away from dots a little bit because most of the environments and lane markings now are going more towards these colorful lines instead of dots, which kind of makes sense you know it's tesla feeling more confident about how the cameras can perceive their environment so as there's more confidence built that results in the lines on the user interface being improved and while i don't necessarily think the current visualizations are quite ready for the public release where you can start selling this and say all right the feature is complete it definitely feels less developer-esque you know it feels like the car is understanding its surroundings a lot i appreciate the attention to detail of having the center line on screen streets be a yellow line because that's typically how it works in the US and it also appears to gray out the environments past the road which kind of reaffirms for the people using the beta that this is a drivable area and this is not a drivable area and overall I think the UI looks much much better and I'm excited for it to get to more people and one thing that I've been waiting for Tesla to update for a long long time and I'm glad to see it finally come with beta 9 is that it's actually able to detect brake lights and apparently blinkers as well on vehicles around you so Tesla Vision is now able to notice and register not just that a vehicle is slowing down but also that the brake lights are on so if those brake lights light up that means the car should probably start slowing down and that's just another great example of how Tesla in my opinion is optimizing their autonomous driving future for how we have built our driving network which is based on vision humans don't have radar we don't have lidar and now Tesla is even removing radar from their vehicles as it's proven to be just as safe as before but because they're really relying so much on vision, it makes sense that instead of having a giant beefy radar signal that would shoot forward and try to measure the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, these cameras can just tell, hey, that guy's brake lights are on, so we should probably slow down too. That's pretty much exactly how the neural net of our own brains works, is we're not measuring distances precisely with a radar sensor, we just see brake lights go on and go, okay, we better stop, or we see a blinker turn on and now we know that car in front of us is going to merge into our lane or merge out of our lane and I found it weird that for the longest time Teslas have not been able to detect those brake lights going off or detecting that someone is trying to turn into your lane now it feels like thanks to beta 9 they're finally registering that the overall consensus from a lot of people reviewing beta 9 seems to be it's a lot more confident and it handles turns much nicer especially a lot of roundabouts and blind corners as well as unprotected left turns where it's able to accurately look at its surroundings look at the people which for the longest time in the beta they would always replace cars and objects with like different colored boxes with dots on them and it was probably good for beta development but it's nice to see those car icons and 3d models of people with their legs moving and everything now that's being brought back into the beta which means in my opinion they're getting closer to that official public release where you're not trying to make it look easy to understand for developers but you're just trying to aesthetically make it look nice for your customers and the people that'll be utilizing these features I've been really really impressed with Dirty Tesla's coverage especially because he was able to show how well it works on a dirt road with no lane markings and it seems pretty reliable there although Golly from Hyperchange was able to show quite a few of the weak points of the software and there were several instances where the car was turning towards concrete pillars and going into lanes it's not supposed to so if you guys were hoping that beta 9 would be that update where there's no interventions and everything starts working perfectly I'm sorry that doesn't appear to be what beta 9 is but it it is without a doubt a huge step forward and I think that improving the UI, ditching radar and going all in on Tesla vision and also being able to other visual cues from around you like brake lights and blinkers is going to make the vehicle perform a whole lot better than it has in the past. But the overall reason I'm still unsure if this is ready for a public release, I'm sure that there's a lot of responsible Tesla drivers out there and the vast majority of them would not abuse this software, but it honestly doesn't take much for a troll to get a hold 
hold of this type of software and start abusing it and very quickly Tesla gets in trouble because the car gets in a crash or even worse someone gets hurt because someone was not using the software properly and I can totally understand why Tesla wants to be very very slow with this rollout and take their time and make sure that everything can be as foolproof as possible you know to a certain extent you can't make everything foolproof any idiot can find a way to abuse anything if you go super stupid if you're just trying to get Tesla in trouble so making the software as reliable as possible is probably in their best interest but I do wish they would widen the beta to more and more people as time goes on they could have really high beta requirements like you have to have 10,000 miles of autonomous driving scheduled and no accidents reported or not a lot of data showing you let go of the wheel or not be looking at the road as Tesla has now said that in-cabin camera is monitoring your eyes and making sure you're paying attention I just hope in the future we get to the point where it can just look at your eyes and not need your hands to be on the steering wheel but Tesla I think just wants to be extra extra careful right now and a few things that they still haven't seemed to change with beta 9 is the vehicle once it reaches its destination it just kind of stops so in my opinion a big challenging side of the full self-driving beta that they're gonna have to figure out is a way to not just arrive at your location and then say okay driver take over from here but also have the car pull into a parking lot find a parking space and smart summon has been around for a long long time for Tesla's even people outside of this limited beta and it's still kind of bumpy it still isn't really looking at its surroundings very well and it'll still cut through weird lines and parking spaces and reverse summon I think is going to be just as challenging and Tesla has yet to make any big leaps and bounds with the auto park feature so hopefully there's some improvements hidden there with beta 9 and I do hope that in one of these major betas we can actually get the parking and leaving your parking space and leaving your parking lot thing down because that's going to be very very crucial as Tesla turns full self-driving into less of a beta feature and more of a selling point but ultimately I'm just very very grateful that we got beta 9 and there doesn't appear to be a huge price hike on the horizon Elon said if all things go well with this beta then we should expect the wide release in about a month I'm guessing that wide release is also when we'll get pricing and availability for the subscription model but knowing Elon and how optimistic he is with his timelines I would not be shocked if this wide release takes the rest of the year and we don't get the subscription until maybe Q4. I'm not sure. Hopefully things do go really, really well. I've been very impressed with the videos I've watched thus far. Although it's safe to say, in my opinion, it's not quite ready for the public yet. And there's a lot of work still to be done before we get level five robo taxis. And because of that, I wish Elon and Tesla would not act like this feature is right around the corner or it's going to be solved by the end of the year. I'm totally fine with them incrementally improving and taking their time and trying to make sure things are safe and wanting to make the software as reliable and proven as possible. Those are all the right decisions you should be making, but to also at the same time turn around and say, oh yeah, this will be done in two weeks, or yeah, robo taxis will be available by the end of this year, I just think is unrealistic. And when you're trying to sell people on full self-driving by saying, hey, you should spend 10 grand now because this is going to make you 30 grand next year in passive income, it just starts to come across a little ridiculous when there's so many timelines that get missed over and over and over again. But progress is progress nonetheless and I'm really really happy to see the software improve and hopefully make its way into more vehicles soon. Let me know what you guys think of Beta 9 thus far. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.